Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about the complex plane. So complex numbers um, can be re represented on what looks like an xy axis, so it can be represented on a coordinate plane, except now we're going to be calling it a complex plane. So remember a complex number is just a combination of a real and an imaginary number, such as a plus bi. So now um, our x-axis, or what used to be our x-axis, is now going to be called the real axis, and it represents the real number. And your, what used to be the y-axis is now the imaginary axis. So, for example, if you have something like 2 plus 3i, you can write it as the coordinate 2, 3. And since the real number is 2 and the imaginary number is 3, that's where it's plotted. Um, or negative 4 um, minus i would just be at the coordinate negative 4, negative 1, because the real number is negative 4, and the imaginary number is negative 1. Now you can represent something like just the number 2. The number 2 would be at the coordinate 2, 0, because there are no imaginary parts to that number. And if you have just an imaginary number, um, it'd be represented by the coordinate, for example, 0, 1, for just i. So th that's how you can graph a complex number. Now, many of the different operations and things that we'll do with complex numbers are things we've done before. So first we're going to talk about how to find the absolute value of a complex number, which is also sometimes called the modulus. So essentially what we're doing is we're finding the distance between the point and the origin. So we're using the distance formula, except one of the points is zero. So it would be a minus zero squared and b minus zero squared. Um, now you might notice that this looks kind of similar. It does tie into vectors, so a, a complex number is essentially a component vector. So we're essentially finding the magnitude of our vector. Okay, let's start by um, trying this problem. So first we are going to plot the uh, complex number negative 2 plus 5i. So uh, our real number is negative 2, and our imaginary number is 5, so it's just going to be a coordinate right up here. So it's negative 2 plus 5i, which is represented by the coordinate negative 2, 5. Now this can also be represented as a vector. And then we're going to be finding the absolute value of that, which is essentially using the distance formula. So we're going to do negative 2 squared plus 5 squared and take the square root of that. So we get the square root of 29. So that is the absolute value or the modulus of this complex number. Okay, um, so now go ahead and pause the video and see if you can plot this complex number and find its absolute value. Okay, go ahead and check your answer here. Um, so it should be down in the fourth quadrant, 3 minus 5i, and your absolute value should be the square root of 34. So operations with complex numbers, um, you can follow the same procedures as you do when you're adding or subtracting vectors. However, we have added and subtracted complex numbers before. Um, so you don't have to use vectors, but this is just kind of um, representing it in the complex plane. But essentially, we are just combining like terms. So um, let's see if we could um, add up these two complex numbers. So we know really that we could just combine our real and our imaginary numbers, but let's look at them in terms of a vector representation. So 1 plus 3i could be represented by the vector 1, 3, and 2 plus i could be represented by the vector 2, 1. So we would add up those two vectors, which we have done before. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, and that gives us the complex number 3 plus 4i. All right, now let's try subtracting two complex numbers. Same idea. Just for practice, let's represent them as vectors in a complex plane. Our second one would be 3 and negative 1, and we are now subtracting. 4 minus 3 is 1, 2 minus negative 1 is 3, so this is the complex number 1 plus 3i. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and give this problem, or these two, a try. And go ahead and check your answers here. 
Okay, um, another thing I just want to touch on really quickly is uh, what complex conjugates look like in the complex plane. So remember, a conjugate is where just the, the sign of the imaginary number changes. So 3 plus i, 3 minus i, negative 2 plus 3i, negative 2 minus 3i. So you'll notice that when you graph them in a complex uh, plane, it's really just a reflection over the real axis. Remember, the real axis is what used to be the x-axis. So um, finding the distance between uh, two complex numbers is very, very similar to finding the distance between two points in a regular x, y axis. Um, it's really just the distance formula, except instead, instead of using x1, y1, x2, y2, they're just using different variables because it's no longer in a, an x, y axis. So um, you can find, you can take any complex number, write it as a coordinate in a complex plane, and then you're just using the distance formula as we've done many times before. Okay, let's try this example. We're going to find the distance between 2 plus 3i and 5 minus 2i in the complex plane. So let's start by writing them each as coordinates. So we have 2, 3 and 5, negative 2. And then from here I'm just using the distance formula. Square root of 5 minus 2 squared plus negative 2 minus 3 squared. So we have the square root of 9 plus 25, so we get the square root of 34. So there you have it. Exact same as using the distance formula within a normal x-y axis. So go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. All right. Check our work here. So here are the two numbers written as coordinates, and then it's just distance formula, and you should get the square root of 82. Um, it may not come as a surprise that using the midpoint formula in a complex plane is exactly the same as using it in a regular x-y axis. Um, you can find the midpoint between two complex numbers by adding up what, what were the x values, so adding up the real values, and dividing by 2, and then adding up the imaginary values and dividing by 2, and that is your mid midpoint. All right, so here let's find the midpoint between 4 minus 3i and 2 plus 2i. So let's start by writing them as coordinates. So the first one will be 4, negative 3, and then 2, 2, and let's use our formula. So 4 plus 2 over 2, and then negative 3 plus 2 over 2, so this just becomes 3, negative 1 half. And that is our midpoint. Okay, last one. Go ahead and give this problem a try. Okay, and check your work here. You should get 7 halves, negative 2. All right, that is all for today. Thank you for watching.